The supraorbital gland is a type of lateral nasal gland found in some species of marine birds, particularly penguins, which removes sodium chloride from the bloodstream. The gland is located just above the eyes and surrounds the capillary bed in the head. This capillary bed constantly strains out the salt in the salt water that a marine bird takes in. Since the byproduct of the gland has roughly five times as much salt as would normally be found in the animal's fluid, the supraorbital gland is highly efficient. The penguin excretes the salt byproduct as a brine through his bill. Often the fluid drips out and this gives the appearance of a runny nose. However, the fluid may also be sneezed out. Webbed feet. Marie burns usually have palmate feet or totipalmate feet. The primary use for webbed feet is paddling through water. Some birds like the northern pintail or mollard have webbing between three of their toes. Each bird has a fourth toe located between the webbing that does not help in propelling the bird through the water. Here's how it go works. As the bird pulls its fo foot backwards through the water, the toes spread apart, causing the webs to spread out. The webs push more water than just a bird foot with spread out toes would push. The palmet, forget that, species with total palmet feet include gannets, pelicans, comorites, and hingegas, fragile birds, species with palmet feet, ducks, geese, gulls, terns, flamingos, Gamers, diving ducks, and aquatic birds, many more. See my examples of the pelican toed upon my feet, going under the water, propelling themselves with ease. The seagull, with example of this, upon my feet, mostly in the air, but easier as well to propel, propel themselves, but it's not as with ease with the pelican. There are four basic feeding strategies or ecological guilds for feeding at sea. Surface feeding, pursuit diving, plunge diving, and predation of higher vertebrates. Surface feeding itself can be broken up into two different approaches, surface feeding while flying and surface feeding while swimming. A seabird family that does not land while feeding is a skimmer which has a unique fishing method, flying along the surface with the lower mandible in the water. The beak, also known as the bill, has two parts, the upper mandible and the lower mandible. The upper mandible goes over the skull and does not move independently from the skull. Beaks are covered with a skin that produces a substance called keratin. The same material, feathers, hair, and fingernails are made of. When it's dry, it gives the beak a glossy appearance. When the keratin wears down, it's replaced so that the beak will remain sharp. The normal one used for the beak is to gather or capture food and to drink. They also use it to build their nest. They use it to defend themselves and their chicks and for preening, which is grooming. Some birds like the American white pelican even grow special structures on their beaks during breeding season to make themselves more attractive. The shape of the beak depends on what they eat. Feathers. Unlike other birds, penguins have very small feathers. These feathers come in two different layers. Outer layer, outer layer, waterproof and densely packed in a cup shape unlike many other birds. Inner layer, the inner section traps an insulation, insulating layer of air, keeping the penguin warm in the sometimes freezing water. This helps to keep themselves from getting cold when they're searching for food. And a good adaptation for the penguins. The mouth. Some marine birds such as pelicans use their elastic pouches to catch fish. They do not store fish in their pouch, but simply use it to catch them and then tip it back to drain out water and swallow the fish immediately. Others such as penguins have spines on the top and bottom of their beak and on their cheeks. They work like a conveyor belt to keep things moving in one direction. Surface feeders often have unique bills as well, adapted to a specific prey. Primates have special bills with filters called lambing to filter out plankton from mouthfuls of water, and many albatrosses and patrols have hooked bills with snapped fast-moving prey. Wing morphology has been shaped by the niche an individual species or family has evolved, so that looking at a wing's shape and loading can tell a scientist about its life-feeding behavior. 
Longer wings and low wing loading are typical of more pelagic species, while diving species have shorter wings. Species such as a wandering albatross, which forage over huge areas of sea, have a reduced capacity for powered flight and are dependent on a type of gliding called dynamic soaring, where the wind deflected by waves provides lift as well as slope soaring. They spend a lot of time grooming and straightening them to make sure that they are waterproof. In our model, we made a penguin with a fusiform body that is an adaptation for swimming. The penguin has a black and white coloration. The black assists the penguin to camouflage from predators in deep ocean. The legs of the penguin are generally used to hop, but in the emperor penguin, they are used to walk slowly. On all penguins, the legs help them steer and streamline when swimming. The flippers also help the emperor penguin in swimming. With flattened and broadened bones, along with a hard rigid paddle with tiny stiff feathers, the penguin has adapted to becoming a very efficient swimmer. The emperor penguin also has a long and thin bill, which helps in eating fish. Unlike the emperor penguin, most other penguins have a short and wider bill, which helps in eating krill.